lost a lap, but, but we'll see, uh, and is on the tra tail of the safety car train. So that presumably is Nürburgring Norbert? As opposed to Silverstone. Silverstone. So, come on, Paul, come on, it's still early. <laughs> well, you know, come with me on this. 57 All cars. together or not at all. 57 cars then in the lead group, and uh, uh, whilst the order at the moment, I think, is slightly awry. Yes, all of them have got a lap down, because yes. as, we, as we intimated, uh, the leading group of cars were gridded up downstream yes. of, the, of the timing and scoring uh, line at the at the start line, which is not at the finish line, which is way back, further back down Indeed. the pit lane. So our current, in, quote, leader is the number 104 so SP3. Well, there's, a, there's a quiz question for yeah. you. But it's not, because it, it, it's not in the lead. It's, this is just no, a, exactly. a, a, yeah. a, a feature of the timing and the way that the timing system works, which we had at the beginning of the race as well, yeah. um, which sent everybody in into a frenzy. <laughs> um, Where's the leader but, gone? Oh, he's still there. But, um, as I say, we'll, we'll be able to uh, cope with it reasonably well. The leading car number two comes across the start finish line mm -hmm. uh, which enables me to tell you that it's the 355 Cayman which is now at the front of the SP2 class so having been um, bested by the uh, Audi TTs in qualifying the Cayman has now got itself up ahead of the Audi TTs um, and is the um, probably one of the few surviving Caymans following the uh, uh, incidents that Cayman were I, I think, I think they predominantly so the one that almost vaulted the barriers backwards and sort of ran backwards along the rim on the top rail. That one, you'd, you would be surprised if there was nothing that was needing doing it. But, uh, yeah, 355, I'm, I, I can't believe it didn't go off because pretty much 70% of visitors to the gravel trap down there were Caymans. It was that group. But that's the Mulner Motorsport car of uh, Daniel Bort, Frank Schmickler, Frank Schmickler? The Frank Schmickler? And uh, Pierre Humbert. So uh, that is their Cup 3 car. Uh, and they are now up to ninth on our scoring. Uh, so, in fact, only the final eight of that first group were behind the timing beacon and, and uh, went uh, to, in quote, Ign count another lap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ignore the timing beacon for those purposes. What mm. we do have, though, um, uh, this is a bit of a techie timing issue, um, but... In effect, although we are under safety car conditions, we have had uh, a green flag indication, which means, from the point of view of counting laps, we have now started counting laps again. Uh, that, cut, that lap behind the safety car was not a lap, just as the lap that was in progress when the red flag came out was not a lap. We also have a new, uh, our first pit caller, apparently. 78 uh, BMW M3 is in. That's the Team Securetal Sorg Ren Sport car. Uh, shown as being in the pits rather than is proceeding. In, there is indeed a car coming down the pit lane at the moment, but it is not that one, oh. uh, Martin. It's number 304, uh, which I've That's got one of the BMW Cup cars, is it Down not? the pit lane, yes it is. See um, you. And it is now asked to stop at the end of the pit lane because yep. it has to wait for a safety car train to come past uh, and then it will be able to join in and it's the uh, leading car number three which is now coming across the uh, finish line to enable its uh, race to restart that so uh, that 305 is one of the many bonk motorsport cars that's, other, uh, that's their 235 eyes and it? other um, pit callers coming from the third group as well at least i think a couple of cars peeling off into pit lane uh, 204 shown as a pit lane caller as well. 201 is still a question mark because uh, last we had of that, it was in the tent out the back being nailed together by uh, Matilda Racing. And that was the car that was leading the TCR class to say at Leon. I didn't see in that group and Graham possibly you'll be able to check the tie the uh, timing screen um, I didn't see the Opal Manta in that group that just went through uh, the, the Opal Manta should be in group the... 2 shouldn't it no I well I saw it being cars. pushed onto the grid okay the Calibra was there no I definitely saw the Manta the from Manta behind being pushed well. onto the can grid can you remind me the, the running number of the Manta <laughs> Um, I will do in... One, two, two. Yes. <laughs> How is it that everybody on the planet knows the running order it's of the Manta? It's a different number, number this year. That's my, my slight problem with it. It's a different number, I think, this year. Yes. One, two, two. Kissling I'm Motorsport looking Manta. now. Uh, is... A uh, I'm seeing it sh as shown in the pit lane now, uh, in 149th place. So... And it's in the pit. Entirely correct. Yeah. And I think it's in the pit lane still from... 
before the red flag. So no, no, it was definitely pushed onto the grid. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, definitely pushed on. I grid. saw it with my own eye. Okay. Uh, however, it may not have left the grid under its own steam, and that again, you know, uh, with uh, regards to BMW number 23, uh, that's another. I can another... tell you, it did because I checked what was in pit lane before we got on the green. Uh, so it definitely, definitely joined the grid. Might have been back in the garage by that stage. No. Okay. I'm just venturing an option. No, no, and it's, they're good options. They're it, just it, not how, ones. However, it does say that its pit lane time is now up to nearly four minutes, so it hasn't been in there forever and ever, although presumably time didn't start again until things started rolling. Unless it took the shortcuts uh, after rolling away. It could have actually come in. Looped um, around the back. Correct. Yes. That's more likely, I think. So we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars shown, nine cars shown in the pit lane. And we have question marks over the number 99 Falconhorst car, over the number 82 car, over 350. That's the Putlam Espenlaub for Donk and Masson car. Uh, and that is the Pro Sport Performance Porsche Cayman. You mentioned them, 350. Uh, we've got a question mark over 319 and 107 911. Those who've asked on Twitter, it does seem as though. Uh, Porsche have written off any hope of 911 being anything other than a ball and chain around their neck and dragging them down. So I'm afraid for uh, Nick Tandy, Kevin Estra, Earl Bamber and Patrick Pile, it's been one of their shorter races. A great shame and, uh, you know, pre-race favourites, mm. uh, one of the pre-race favourites, that car, and uh, not least because of the quality of the drivers as well as and the team. Particularly Galling, having already had that problem during the qualifying session uh, and the amount of hard work that was required in order to get the car race-worthy uh, following the, um, the, um, the pre... The, mm. Uh, top 30 qualifying it's called yeah. isn't it the uh, the top 30 qualifying um to then have uh, just a one lap wonder in effect for uh, for the race while we're on this second uh, drying out wetting up lap wet up uh 201 the tcr leading as it was say at leon that was heavily damaged basically had the left front corner ripped off it is now shown as in pit lane it is with a pit time of only three minutes it's waiting at the end of the pit lane so it is a goer it is a goer not it a is, goner it is very much a goer and it will be joining in just as soon as the next safety car uh, arrives at the end pit lane exit and the train of cars that's following that safety car can um, and it will be able to get uh, on the way as but, but will, will, have will now have lost a lap Paul. yes, yes. Uh, as will the 304 BMW that I mentioned as well which uh, the problem is that the three safety cars are actually relatively close together uh, rather than having split themselves up by uh, three to five minutes as they did um, for the race start proper um, they're now separated I would suggest only by um, about the length of this crocodile that's following the first safety car about the same distance behind is then the second safety car yeah so the rain continues to fall at the Nürburgring as the field threads its way around increasingly spread out and the job now for this for the uh, leading car drivers for each of our three group of starters is presumably to be uh, in direct control with race control so that group two doesn't end up catching the back of group one and group three doesn't end up catching the back of group two and of course with the way that there are such short sight lines here the safety car driver can't do that on his own the race control need to be advised by the marshals of of how yeah. far apart these groups are yes uh, and there are gps positioning GPS things position, uh, yeah. on the safety cars as well as on the racing cars but um the reason why they're d they're not spreading them further is so as not to disadvantage them too much because they've already had their three minutes of a delay um for the start itself and if they would split them again, then that would be an artificial further delay, which yeah. is um, something that I was just trying to get my head around as how yes. that would work, and I don't think it can. So, I think it's, it's just happening, and that's the way it is. Quite so. Um, and in the, the grand scheme of things, we should, uh, it should make no difference anyway. And because of what you're saying, where they've tried to shuffle back and not restart everybody in exactly the order they were and divide the field into three in groups of numbers, but have tried to put the classes back together although you may have been up against or past some quote faster class cars 
you will have lost that position and may have to take it back again against the fast class cars, but against your own class, you won't be particularly disadvantaged. Uh, no, certainly not, and in fact, against the faster class cars, you are, you are advantaged, and this is the whole point, yeah. because your race time starts at the point when your race actually started. So yeah. the cars that started in Group 2 actually get a three-minute credit, as it were, on their race time. Sounds like a reasonable idea. And of course, the guys who are at the very front of each of the starting groups have at least, I don't know what, maybe a third of a lap, half a lap of, of reasonable visibility before it all starts to run into the tail of the spray of the car in front again. And there will be a lot of that. Whatever the safety car or whatever the leading car cues have been able to allow the drivers to see, predominantly it will be windscreen wipers flailing and spray all over the place. There are no major rivers of water that we see around the track. It's not deluge, but it is going to be very wet. Temperature now, of course, has just gone through the floor, so it's not going to steam off the track anytime soon. And uh, what little water will evaporate from now on will just hang around in the trees in, uh, in, in mist. And as the temperature, the air temperature generally drops, that will then be held down by the, uh, the temperature inversion and become a foggy, wet night. So it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be a challenging restart for, I think, everybody. And uh, I don't think I want to be part of race control for a race like this. Do you know In what these I mean? Conditions, you know, it's... they have so much responsibility, don't they? They, you know, when you're, a, when you're a team manager, you're responsible for the safety of your team members in the pit lane, your driver in the car, and you do as much as you can to keep them safe. Race control that team of individuals as well as every single marshal out here responsible for the safety of every single person in the car and that is a, a phenomenal undertaking at any race you have that weight of responsibility here you've got over 150 cars you got you know 400 odd drivers that you are trying to keep out of harm's way and then hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of workers rescue workers and marshals around the track who similarly expose themselves to danger to try and help others. Uh, a third car joins the queue at pit lane exit, uh, that being the 115 uh, 5 Series BMW. This is the, uh, the rather elderly BMW 540i, liquid petroleum gas fueled, and that was the car we saw mm. right have two separate impacts uh, as part of that initial flurry of activity at the, it, the first rainstorm pool. It looks as good as new to me. Um, it's I've, probably come I've, out of the car park and had a bit of livery put on it. Yeah, um, <laughs> it probably is as good as new. Yeah, well, quite. It certainly had uh, more than three hours to, uh, to have the work done on it. Um, I won't t tell you that uh, I saw it reversing in the pit lane, because that's one of the things that you're not supposed to do. But uh, it was told, to be fair, by the marshal to join the queue at the back, because he'd kind of um, tried to take a... Had he formed a separate queue? He sort Is he of, yes. French? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he does have a proud D on the, uh, on the reverse of the car. <laughs> definitely, definitely um, not French. So, um, right. but I, he, he I, I don't insult the Germans while I'm in, in this he's, room. He's uh, followed instructions and is... Uh, now behind the 201 Seat Leon, which is itself behind the one, uh, 304 BMW. And they're waiting for the uh, safety car, as I say, to come through and complete its first proper lap. Uh, if that previous lap was a formation lap, this there is a lap that counts. And, uh, and there will be a lap. third formation lap, Paul. There Thank will be a gosh. third formation lap. Excellent. Now, I wonder whether that is to allow tyre temperatures to really go down to absolute zero or whether it is to try and allow timing and scoring to somehow catch up because we have had the entire field across the across the start finish line once and it, sort it will be of has it will be for safety purposes yeah. i think martin because the track is so wet that to allow them to race in these conditions uh, would just be inviting more uh, accidents so well, I, I think this is purely for safety reasons all right but the problem is they were perfectly safe before parked in the pits you've now got them to start up and drive around on a track that you knew already was wet because we could see it was wet and we could look out the window and see it was getting wetter um, so now you have raised the jeopardy level so now you're making them go round almost blind at minimal speed with no aerodynamics precious little heat in brake or tyre I'm not sure how this is a a, a safety bonus. Multiple reports though from social media that the rain is getting harder at multiple points and much harder at multiple points around the circuit which mm -hmm. is I have to say we did say we thought this was going to happen. Well, and again you know you're 
I, I'll play devil's advocate here, and on behalf of race control, your first priority is safety, your second priority is to try and get the race going and become a race, and so they have, you know, they've done all the repairs, they've got everything sorted out, everybody's back in position, all the flatbeds, all the rescue facilities are perfectly parked, ready to go, okay, let's start a countdown to green, and then you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know, somebody will, crit you know, let's face it, somebody will criticise you, that's our job, uh, whether you do it right or, you, or whichever way you slice it, you know. If you're lucky and the weather doesn't come, great, you're a hero. If you're unlucky and the weather does come, oh, of course you're a fool for even doing it. But it is raining really quite a lot heavier now, and unfortunately, I I'm sort of thinking, Paul, that by the time we get to the end of this lap, we might be looking at a red flag and stop the cars on the grid and wait for it to be less wet. Uh, I, and I of course, know. immediately you'd make that decision and announce it and tell everybody it's going to happen. Within four minutes, it'll be stop raining completely and everyone will go, well, why did you stop that? It finished, you know? Yes. I mean, I, I think we, because we don't have as good uh, weather prediction software and uh, satellite images of what the weather is doing in the surrounding area, we don't have the local knowledge that the race control, race direction has. As, um, so I, I won't even predict what uh, is going to happen next. But I think it is important to get the cars out on the track just because that's part of the race. It's, it's on, it, having cars sitting in the pit lane may be all very good and safe, but it's, it's not giving them the opportunity to go racing. Uh, a couple of things I'd say. Uh, one of the clues that actually things are not all that bad in, in storm terms is that we've got the helicopter still up. Now, if they, their weather radar was telling them the storm's inbound, we wouldn't have the TV helicopter up at this stage, mm. true? not with, with a storm front coming in. Uh, for listeners to RadioLeMond.com uh, for, for this race, you will know with a shadow of a doubt when we are concerned about a long delay because you'll hear the voice of Joe Bradley starting up the tale about the British touring car team. At that point, you should start to get pretty worried about things. But until that point, we're just still in this almost a holding pattern, aren't we? The skies are yeah. us at the moment. There might be rain coming through, but skies are reasonably bright uh, at the moment over start-finish straight. Uh, it doesn't look that... Uh, when we get in the kind of the longer camera shots of the dotting of her with uh, with all the spray hanging in the air but at the moment it's brighter than it has been in the last 20 or 30 minutes well and again you know an indication is that we've got longer camera shots from the helicopters and we can actually see things which which possibly does mean that it is raining a little less in certain parts of the track and again, but again you know that's with a with a track that covers three or four small towns and half a dozen villages yeah, we get this at Silverstone. It'll be raining 